I mean, if I had to f flip a coin between Joni Mitchell and Miles Davis, that would be a tough call. <laughs> If you're a blues guitar expert or not, you're sure to be mesmerized by the magical music from Robin Ford. This five-time Grammy nominee talks through his career highlights and dream duets. I've been making solo records for many years now, you know. I think my first solo album was in 1979. And uh, there was kind of a long period between that record and the next uh, for, for many reasons. But um, the first record was a fusion record, and it was actually the birth of a band called the Yellow Jackets, which has been to Montreux many, many times. In fact, my first time to Montreux was with the Yellow Jackets. And um, so, over the years, not, you know, from kind of my second solo album on, my music became much more blues and R&B. And uh, I started focusing more and more on songwriting and uh, uh, songwriting uh, as opposed to instrumental songwriting, you know, lyrics, singing. And um, I would have to say that through that whole process, there's been a constant evolution. I'd like to think of it as evolution, excuse me. Um, every one of them is different. Every single record is different. I mean, Kiss, that was just a session, you know. I recorded with them for a few days, so. Uh, the relationship with Miles Davis and Joni Mitchell and, and a lot of other artists was far more, you know, I mean, on the road, you know, touring and... You can take it or leave it, you don't need to be nice. You're living through hard times and it's starting to show. Even the blues, do you want to? Um, so much deeper relationships, you know, in those cases. And uh, my favorite artist that I ever worked with is Joni Mitchell, indeed. I mean, if I had to f flip a coin between Joni Mitchell and Miles Davis, that would be a tough call, you know, like. I like to give myself about three months, and uh, I used to be able to do that. It's harder now. Uh, things kind of have to happen uh, relatively quickly. But I'm in this space, this kind of phase where writing to me has become uh, like really a part of my life. It's not like you have a record to do, write a bunch of songs, you know. Uh, it's more. Uh, just a part of my life. I'll, I'll be inspired to write and I'll just write. I'll just write a song, you know. So, in a way, you know, that, it, it take, I can take more time, you know, to work than otherwise. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being very clear here, but. So yeah, I, I much prefer having time. A Day in Nashville, that was a very unique album, you know. Uh, initially it was meant to be a live recording of my previous record, which was called Bringing It Back Home. But the live recordings were so bad that we just decided to go into the studio three weeks later, we only had three weeks, and record it live in the studio. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be better if we had some new songs instead of just, you know, redoing what we've already done. Who, who needs to hear that again, you know? 
So uh, I did. I just knuckled down and I wrote six songs what they do is always in three weeks. I've never done Ready? that before. And they're One, good. Two, three, four. <laughs> There is one guitar I have, it's a 1960 Telecaster, that has been sort of the most, it's been my best friend, you know, kind of through thick and thin. You can't hurt it. You could throw it across the room, you wouldn't hurt it. <laughs> um, and uh, it sounds great. Um, I, I think of it as really a blues and rhythm guitar. Uh, so it's not exactly what I would prefer to use for, there are certain things where other instruments come in more handy. Uh, the Les Paul, you know, is, is to me probably the most versatile guitar. But the Telecaster is the one you're referring to. Incredible instrument. Just get a book and learn chords. This is what I did when I was about 19, and it just changed everything for me. You know, I went from a guy playing blues licks who knew some very basic chords to someone with a lot of chord knowledge uh, that I was able to apply to the blues that I was playing. that led to you know, what kind of a scale do you play over that chord. So I got another book and I learned the scales that are played over those chords and just started exercising it, you know. So it's very simple stuff really. I, I don't know why people are so afraid of music, you know. <laughs>